Are you thinking about going on a Virgin Voyages cruise in 2024? Well, I just got off a seven night Virgin Voyages leaving from Athens out of the Piraeus port. And in this video, I wanna go through my thoughts and opinions on it as a cruise line, my experience as a younger millennial and all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Right, welcome back to the Lifting Nomad. My name is Alex. If you are new here, all my content is about travel, fitness, lifestyle, living a balanced approach to enjoy tequila, enjoy some fitness without really sacrificing all of our time and energy, but still living a happy and balanced life. And again, in this video, I wanna go through my thoughts and opinions on Virgin Voyages as a whole. And really quickly to set the stage, I am what you would consider like a cruise kid. My parents took me on, I think like close to 50 now from when I was like four or five years old through my teens, uh, through my early 20s. And now that I'm into my late 20s and I'm actually having to pay for these vacations, it's a lot more important for me to actually get the value out of what, uh, what I experience. And additionally to that, I have been to 30 countries over the last three years. So I do have a pretty good travel background to begin with. Now, with that being said, specifically to cruises, I've been on Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, MSC, uh, Princess, uh, Holland America, Virgin Voyages. So quite a lot of experiences throughout the years. But let's get even more dialed in. Let's chat about Virgin Voyages. I just got off a seven night Greek island glow on the resilient lady out of the Athens port. Now the Athens port is actually the Piraeus port, which is a little bit out of the Athens city core. It takes about 30 minutes from the downtown and about 40 minutes from the airport if you are flying into Athens and then heading straight to the port. The route for this was really, really interesting. Uh, my sister was the one who had suggested it. Uh, we actually did from Piraeus to Santorini, to Mykonos, to Rhodes, and as well as Bodrum, Turkey. Now this was my third Virgin voyage. The other two were out of the uh, Caribbean ports from Miami. Uh, and during that time, I wasn't as, uh, let's say critical of the cruises. I wasn't starting to create content and really focus on that. I was mostly just focused on enjoying and relaxing my vacations. So this was definitely more of a route focused trip. Uh, we were getting off the ship almost every single day. We only had one sea day, and then we had an overnight in Mykonos. The route itself was really, really incredible. We saw some beautiful destinations from doing a hike in Mykonos, going down to a beach club at, Par at Super Paradise Beach, as well as finishing the night at 180 Sunset Bar and having the most beautiful sunset I have ever seen in my life. If you go to Mykonos, you need to go to 180 Sunset Bar. Additionally to that, we did a boat cruise in Rhodes, which was kind of just like a typical sort of open bar, lunch, boat cruise around some of the islands. We stopped to swim, all that good stuff. And then we also got off the ship very briefly in Bodrum, Turkey. Uh, I've had a few friends who lived in Istanbul, but at the same time, they mentioned that going outside of Istanbul, it's really not that um, tourist friendly. And I had to agree, Bodrum felt a little bit dirty, a little bit pushy from like street salesmen and vendors, which is really not the kind of country I typically enjoy. Most of my travel is usually in like South America or Western Central Europe. So this was not something that's like super comfortable for me or super enjoyable at the same time. All right, let's talk about the cabin. So I was in a Central Sea Terrace. Uh, I had this last time as well. The first one is actually in a solo insider, which I think it's worth mentioning. The Central Sea Terrace is a lot for one person. Um, for two people, I would actually recommend the extra large Sea Terrace for a couple of reasons. The bathroom is separate. So you have like the shower and then the toilet and then a sort of a um, communal sink in between the two, which lets you kind of get ready at the same time without disturbing the other person. But for one person, the Central Sea Terrace or the Solo Insider is perfect. Uh, I would say it's, you know, depending on your budget, the Solo Insider is more than enough cabin. The bathroom is the exact same size. I've had both of these cabins before. The Solo Insider versus Central Sea Terrace or just a general Sea Terrace, the bathrooms are identical. So if price is an option and you're by yourself, the Solo Insider is amazing. And that's really one of the reasons I love Virgin Voyages, honestly, is because the Solo Supplement on other cruise lines, I'm, too, I'm getting too old now to be sharing a room with people, so I need to have my own cabin. And on most of the other cruise lines, like Royal Caribbean, for instance, I have to pay for two people just to be in that cabin by myself. And it gets very, very expensive for honestly no good reason. And Virgin has thought ahead of this and they have quite a lot of these solo cabins available, which lets people like me go and enjoy this trip with like my couple, like my couple friends or like my dad and, and his girlfriend without needing my own cabin and paying for two people. 
So again, if cost is an option, Solo Insider, one of my favorite cabins on any cruise ship ever. With that being said, there is no window. So what I would recommend is I always left the TV on to the ship camera. That way, as the sunrise came up outside, it kind of simulated that sunrise in the cabin. Really up to you though, if you get claustrophobic, maybe the, <laughs> the insider room is not for you. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about the ship. So the, the cruise ship design for Virgin is very non-conventional. They don't have like the grand sort of um, herding the cattle trough buffet and main dining room areas. They are fundamentally trying to do something different than the main cruise lines, which personally for me, I really, really like. You know, I don't like like picking up these dishes and tongs that first of all, like children uh, or like, you know, just gross people have been touching all day long. The food just isn't as clean and it isn't as fresh. So personally, I pre prefer the galley, which is considered like the buffet on Virgin, but there isn't any food you're sharing there, if that makes sense. So they do have some grab and go options from like bento boxes to fruit plates to charcuterie boards, to wraps and salads, that kind of thing. But if you do want a more of a traditional sit down meal, you can just sit down at a table, the menu's on the table, and then whenever you're ready to order, you flip the flag on the menu, a server will come over and take your order, it'll be made fresh to order and brought back to your table. I think this is awesome. I don't like the idea of the trough, I never have. So for me, this is a big plus one. Additionally, a lot of the spaces throughout the ship are designed to kind of separate people into their sort of um, personality types or things that they enjoy. So as you're walking around the ship, you'll see smaller, more boutique areas that let you pick an area of the ship that is more conducive to your type, to your type of travel. If you want something, uh, let's say a little bit more chill, a little bit more relaxed, a little more comfortable, if you've got areas like the dock uh, and the dock house that are definitely more chill, the music typically at the dock is very, very relaxed and quiet. Sometimes during Sail Away, they do have a DJ for a couple of hours to kind of pick things up. But for the most part, it's very serene, very relaxing back there. And the dock house, same kind of thing. They also have in the social club and then the loose cannon, uh, they have some board games. They have like shuffleboard, uh, like the little slidey shuffleboard game. They also have shuffleboard outside on the side of the deck, which I didn't realize until the last day of the ship. And then if you do want something maybe a little bit more lively, obviously the pool deck is the place to go for that. Several outdoor bars, two different pool options. A lot of people do critique the pool area saying it is too small for how many people are on board. Yeah, I think that kind of comes down to personal preference. Very few people are on board to do like lap swimming anyways. So I don't really see like the benefit to having a massive pool area as it does kind of separate the people who want to have that kind of party vibe. And then there is always like the second pool which typically has much more chill music if anything at all. That way if you do want to just go relax and not be blasted by music, you can do that. Additionally, you can go to the top sun deck, which is definitely a lot quieter. Uh, it can be a little bit windy up there. A few of the days when we were just coming out of like uh, Rhodes, for instance, and Bodrum, it wasn't as warm on the top deck. Granted, this was a May cruise, so I think in like the peak, peak summer season, it's going to be totally irrelevant and it's going to be super hot regardless of where you go. We can, I, can talk, I can touch briefly on the port as well. Um, as I recommended already, uh, Mykonos, beautiful place to, to go to a beach club, go to the old town and get like a, night, a good night out. They do spend almost 40 hours there. So you do get a full overnight in Mykonos when, when they're running the tenders and the buses all night long. So if you are looking to go out and get after it in Mykonos, you certainly can on a bar night out. This is not like a chill city. Um, the island itself has some chill areas if you want to go to like a beach uh, and just relax. But if you are looking to go out in the downtown area, this is chaotic. This is not chill. Santorini, on the other hand, was very, uh, very beautiful, very relaxing. Um, we went to like a Moody Bay uh, at the fish restaurant there and then took a water taxi back to the port where we got picked up by the ship. Super, super easy. This was really well coordinated. I would definitely recommend doing the water taxi from a Moody Bay back to the port. Beautiful coastline views along the way. And then it kind of takes you back to the beginning where you took the cable car to go back up top. Again, in this case, I've already touched on Bo Bodrum, so I'm not gonna do it again. Um, and roads, really up to you. It's a pretty chill area. We did like a boat cruise, but there was some other options that I can't really comment as I didn't do them. Now let's talk about the people on board. So I, I would say of the three I've done, this was probably the oldest. I did a seven night uh, Christmas cruise. Uh, I did a five night uh, in May. And then obviously this seven night now in May of this year. And I would say on average, the age is probably like in the late eh, late 30s, early 40s, or maybe even mid 40s on board total. There's definitely less of like the, the geriatric sort of power scooters and walkers that you would see on like Celebrity, for instance. But it, it isn't as quite young as let's say like Carnival or Norwegian. Personally, for me, I, I like this. Uh, like as I'm getting into my late 20s, um, <laughs> early 30s soon enough, 
it's I'm getting more involved in like spending my money on things that are like higher quality. So even though I'm not necessarily getting like the same sort of rager that I might get on Carnival, it's it's just like a better party overall. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. And it is certainly worth mentioning if you are um, someone who's sensitive to like LGBTQ+, there is a strong presence of them on Virgin Voyages. So if that's a deterrent for you, just be aware, maybe Virgin Voyages isn't for you. Also because the, the cruise line includes tips and they generally pay their staff a lot better and they're a lot more open to things like visible tattoos and just being more themselves, I find the crew to be a lot more happy and a lot more enjoyable to be around and chat with. Uh, during like sea days or port days when I get back on early, I'm almost always just sitting at a bar chatting up the bartenders. And it seems in my experience, the people who work for Virgin are happier than the other cruise lines. I'm not a, a, a crew member myself, so I can't comment on the specifics of it, but that would be sort of my derivative of that. Finally, let's talk about the food and the nightlife. Uh, I think the food on board Virgin is the best of any of the cruise lines I've done. They have everything from like pretty craft Mexican food and pink agave, which I've lived in Mexico City. This was fairly comparable. You know, obviously I had some great meals in CDMX, but there was there's some great food at pink agave. I think pink agave is probably my favorite. Uh, they have extra virgin, which is sort of a classical Italian restaurant. Uh, the Wake, which is like a steak and seafood restaurant. Razzle Dazzle, which used to be like vegan and vegetarian focused, but now they've kind of updated it to have some options um, for meat eaters and carnivores alike. Um, I will say every restaurant does have some options if you are like a vegan or vegetarian. So don't worry, you're not gonna be able to, you know, visit these restaurants if you do have some sort of dietary restriction. The nightlife, I don't wanna spoil this for anyone who hasn't done Virgin before, but the nightlife truly is the best I've found. The Manor is like a traditional nightclub that is, is done up properly. They do some shows and events in there, but for the most part, after 11 p.m. on every night, it turns into like the traditional nightclub venue. And it is it is very, very busy. Like the nights before a sea day, um, or even like the first night, people really do get after it in there. And it's, it's really interestingly laid out in the sense that they can open additional areas of it, like at the top, um, or even like additional back areas if it is really, really full, um, which lets you kind of, which lets it kind of always feel full because the capacity of the dance floor isn't really that much, but then when you add in all these additional areas up top and, and to the sides, it can accommodate a lot more people. And then of course, what would be a Virgin Voyages video without talking about Scarlet Night? Scarlet Night is the best party on any cruise ship I've ever seen. Uh, I will not spoil it for everyone, but I will say just wear red and wear something that you don't mind getting wet. Uh, it is it is awesome. Spend the whole night there. Get ready for it. It is it is probably like the highlight of my week when I go on a Virgin cruise. Scarlet Night is truly amazing. So end of the day, sort of conclusions on it. Uh, I think Virgin is perfect for someone like me who likes to spend a little bit more money to get something a little bit higher end, but still accommodate to younger people. Um, it's typically like I would say younger, more affluent people on board because the price point is a little bit higher. Uh, but because of that, it's a lot more relatable for people like myself who fairly well traveled. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, feel free to leave a like or comment in the section below. Um, as always, my name is Alex. Welcome back to Lifting Nomad. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.